I'm Crystal McGregor from Food Island Partnership and I'm joined here with Chef Jesse McDonald, the superb executive chef here at the Wheel House in beautiful Georgetown, Prince Edward Island, Canada's Food Island. So Jesse, what are we cooking up today? So we are about to prepare two dishes I'm super excited about and we're going to be showcasing Island Beef, one of oh, my favorite products. It. So good. Yep. So you have a couple of events going on. So yeah. What's, what's so up? we are... Um, launching a partnership with uh, Atlantic Beef that we're going to feature uh, three different cuts of uh, island beef that not uh, on our menu currently. Um, we're gonna host those over the weekend. And the idea is, uh, you know, cuts that people may not be as used to, right? So something a little bit different, unique, but is also very approachable and they can do at home. Okay. Um, the two dishes that we're gonna be focusing on today and the two cuts are a flat iron steak and a delicious short rib. Ooh, so I these are the two that we're gonna kind of focus on and build uh, the final plates and you'll see what the features are gonna be uh, coming up in July. We're gonna be featuring the flat iron on uh, July 8th and 9th, the short rib on the 15th and 16th, and then we're really excited for the last of the third dishes, uh, which is a T-bone surf and turf um, that we're gonna kind of gear toward couples. It'd be a large 15, 16 ounce steak uh, served with scallops. Uh, so really excited about this promotion. Um, we're calling it our uh, summer staycation here at Aww. the wheelhouse. So we're hopeful that we're gonna see some people out in July on the weekend to feature this awesome island beef. Oh, perfect. All right, well, let's get cooking. So what are we starting with first? So yeah. we're going to get, uh, first thing, we'll probably end up plating the strip, uh, short, sorry, the short rib up first. Okay. But to start, I'm going to get our flank steak going in on the grill. Um, this is a very, very simple marinade, salt, pepper, a little bit of uh, parsley, black garlic, some oil, and just a little bit of lemon zest. Nice. So I'm going to take that, make sure that I have a good bit of my herbs and garlic on there, but not too much oil for a flame up, and get that right on the stove. Oh, that's great. What kind of heat are we working with? So I'm actually working, and we had kind of briefly touched on this. Um, yep. I'm actually working on a uh, kind of medium heat. Okay. The key with a flat iron is you want to serve it, in my opinion, a little bit on the rare side to get that richness of the fat, but also the beautiful texture of the meat. However, because of that fat content, if you have too high of a heat, it can char the outside. Okay. So you want to kind of slowly bring out that fat. You can kind of see already in the surface, it's oh, almost yeah. got a sheen to it, right? And that's yeah. the heat that's pushing the fat and the juices up to the surface. Right. And that's actually the reason why we flip a steak back and forth you know you flip a, flip a steak four different times yeah. um, and you're rotating back and forth the entire time so that the juice you know rises to the top and then as you flip it it kind of stays internalized as opposed yeah. to being pushed out oh, of the so steak great. itself okay well, that's a great hot tip guys no pushing down with those spatulas flip flip four times all, all right. right so as that kind of slowly uh, mm -hmm you know, grills away and starts to build uh, some of that flavor that we want to get, that smokiness from the grill. Yep. We're going to go ahead and throw one of our short ribs Ooh, look at these. on the grill. So I'm going to take this guy that's kind of in the back there nice. and I'm just going to set him on the grill for a second. So I am topping with a little bit of a pickled strawberry barbecue sauce. Ooh. So uh, we're coming up into strawberry season here on the island you know great local strawberries kind of tip to tip mm -hmm. and the natural acidity in uh kind of these uh local fruit is a great pairing with beef because not only does it accent the deepness of that beef flavor yes. profile but the acidity in the barbecue sauce actually helps cut some of that fat in the sinew oh, it and it helps break down the meat and becomes a little more tender mm -hmm. now obviously with these short ribs yeah. they were pre um roasted in the oven okay. give them a little bit of braise and some um, beef shoe a little bit of maple syrup some salt pepper red wine of course yeah. so what we're doing on the grill actually is almost just introducing the final heat okay. and some char this also allows um, that deepness of the beef to come through and it gets that perfect smokiness while not being too tough and overcooked right nice Oh my gosh, guys, it is smelling so good in here. I wish you were all here. That's why you got to get down to Georgetown and go to the wheelhouse and check this out. So now as we go back to our flank, I'm just oh, about yeah. ready to flip look it. Look at this. Come on in and take you a look at that. You can see how the fat is starting to meld away. The meat is cooking, but there's a lot of residual moisture that's coming through that steak. We're going to flip that over to keep as much of that internalized as we possibly can. Okay. Perfect. So again, we see our short rib. It's kind of in the back getting nice and charred up 
And again, this is just a reheat. So we're only looking to go to about 165 degrees uh, service temperature because this is already fully cooked, which is different than our flat iron, which obviously was completely in a raw state. But we're gonna serve that in around a medium rare. Okay. So we're gonna see that beautiful color when we go to plate up, nice. okay? So as we uh, kind of let our two beef products um, simmer away on the grill and kind of finish the cooking process, I'm just going to start getting ready some of our side dishes and accompaniments that you are going to see on the plate today. So I have some pre-blanched broccolini, uh, one of my favorite vegetables, a uh, nice little subtle sweetness to it. Um, some asparagus that we're gonna put on there. Uh, pretty, uh, you know, lemon, salt, pepper, uh, pretty standard seasoning. And then some cherry tomatoes that I'm also going to blister up on oh, the grill. I just love so much color too on your plate. Fantastic. Yeah, and, and you know, it's the biggest thing is a nice balance, right? Yeah. Again, I say this all the time, but we're super lucky here on the island. Mm -hmm. My job as a chef is not so much to um, mask these flavors, it's to kind of bring a spotlight to the naturalness and accentuate yeah. as opposed to kind of cover up that flavor profile. Nice. Okay? So again, just giving a check to our beef short ribs, some nice caramelization mm -hmm. happening, mm -hmm. giving that a nice rotation. Our flat iron in the back is grilling away beautifully. So I am just getting ready to flip my vegetables. And in the meantime, mm -hmm. I'm going to ensure that my starches are all ready to go. All right, so what do we have going on? So here? today we have a little bit of a uh, pickled mushroom and herb risotto. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to accompany our flat iron steak nice. and the final dish. Yeah. So this is uh, you know partially prepared. I've had this just on the grill, uh, kind of simmering away, yeah. finishing it up with our dairy. So that's almost ready to go. As well, for our short rib, mm -hmm. we have one of my favorites, the old French classic, the Alligot potato. Ooh, look at that. So nice and rich, lots, again, dairy in that from the folks at ADL. Gotta love that, and PI potatoes. Of I mean, course, the best in the world. yes. So it's, great. Again, it's more about accentuating that natural mm -hmm. flavor profile of those potatoes. And this is a great dish for a short rib yeah. as you get to collect all that rich so beef shoe. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and I then finally, that. we have our classic um, reduction of a mushroom demi glaze oh, nice. to accentuate again that beautiful island beef. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay. So rich, you can just smell it. So good. Yeah. So again, I am going to give a little inspection to my flank steak that's happening here at the back. Looking, nice. Looking great. So I'm going to give that the third flip as well. And then I'm going to give a quick rotation or flip to all my vegetables that I have on the grill as they're getting nice and charred up. You see our tomatoes starting to split and blister. Nice. Exactly what we want to see. Uh, just so that the internalized uh, moisture that's in those tomatoes starts to actually reduce and break down and those tomatoes actually become a little sweeter. Nice. Okay. So as our veg is finishing up here, just going to get ready to place it kind of on the resting area up on the top of the Perfect. grill before we get ready to plate Whoa. up our two dishes. I can't wait. So tell me a little bit about certified island beef, being healthy, happy, humane. Tell me a little bit more about the quality that goes into the beef here on the island. So honestly, um, in my opinion, the beef here is second to none. There's a couple factors for this. Mm -hmm. uh, the two main ones, in my opinion anyways, are the way that uh, these animals are raised and handled, right? right? You know. Uh, these animals have a great life, they're very happy, um, and it's a very natural kind of uh, way that they're raised, you know, in the grazing process and getting a lot of foliage. And that leads into the second factor, which I believe is huge for our island beef, is the terroir here. Oh, yeah. I mean, the natural salinity that's in our vegetation actually just accents that natural beef flavor, and it gives it a little bit oh. more of that flavor profile. I always describe island beef as rich in the sense that it's full flavored, and that foliage really helps with that process oh, awesome. for sure. And I just love when you're on Prince Edward Island, you can actually drive and see these multi-generational farmers who are farming um, these nice, amazing uh, beef product that we get from it as well. And of course we feed our, our beef uh, island PI potatoes to finish as well, which make them a little bit different than anything else out Absolutely, there. absolutely. Oh, look at that, Jesse, it's looking so fantastic. So I'm just oh. again, pulling the veg up kind of the resting area. Tomatoes are almost finished. The short rib is looking look great. Uh, as you can see, the fat is starting to crisp up. Oh, nice yeah. is what we're looking for. That barbecue sauce has a nice glaze on top. 
So I'm gonna go ahead here yeah. um, shortly and get ready to plate up the first, which is our short rib. Yay. Okay, so what we will do, um, as I said, we're just gonna kind of uh, take a little slide to the right here as we get ready to plate up. So I am going to take our alley got potatoes. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, wow, look at that. Give it a nice little rotation, make sure it's well combined right on to our plate, like so. Beautiful. Okay, set this to the side. A bit of grilled asparagus, beautiful flavor profile. Yeah, and you can really just like that grill. Oh, exactly. So much good flavor and color. Broccolini, which I love to grill. You can see the little crispy bits right. on the floor rats, which gives again just kind of accentuates that smoky flavor, which is great. Um, so as these tomatoes, I'm just giving them one more flip oh, yeah. while I'm in the middle of plating to they ensure. Look fantastic! Oh, and that's such a good tip of them getting a lot sweeter on the grill. Yeah. Brilliant. Take a little one and put it up there. Tuck one kind of to the side as well. And then our Very short cool. rib right between those tomatoes. Oh, nice. Look at that. My goodness. Gonna give it another little glaze with our barbecue. And then a little bit of stewed onion that we're gonna add just as a garnish. Oh my gosh, so much flavor and love went into this plate, folks. So much love. And then a little bit of crispy onions on top as well, just for some texture. Wow. Okay. Back to the side. Final touch, just for a little bit of freshness. And some of the um, flavor profile of this arugula is really going to help accent that beef flavor. Oh my gosh, Jesse, this is a work of art. Oh my gosh. Perfect. Staycation at the real house. I love it. Staycation. All right, so that is our first uh, special or oh feature goodness. that we're yeah. going to uh, have on the um, docket here at the wheelhouse during our uh, staycation, and that's the uh, grilled PEI short rib certified island beef with a local pickled strawberry barbecue sauce. Awesome. Alley got potatoes and fresh vegetables. Guys, I cannot wait to tuck into it, but before we do, what are we doing for our so, second dish? All right, now as I give our flat iron oh. that final rotation. Number four, folks, number four rotation. We are going to get ready to plate up our dish. So, as I had mentioned earlier, yeah. our starch is a beautiful pickled wild mushroom Ooh. risotto chanterelle season has just started yep. so we're starting to get kind of the fruits of the natural world here on the island and in our forests Amazing. just some herb paste as well to kind of accent the fattiness of our flat iron so i'm just placing that risotto nice little bed on our plate so beautiful, oh my goodness. Just give a little bit of a wipe there. Suck this off to the side. And now that our flat iron is almost there, I'm just gonna take it off here now. And here it's really important to let your steak sit. Huh? Exactly. So what's gonna happen is it's actually going to reabsorb that moisture. Okay. And if you cut a steak before uh, the internalized temperature has had a chance to drop from the grill, the force and the friction from the knife is actually gonna pull out that moisture and the flavor profile. Yeah. So not only are you losing valuable flavor, but the quality of the piece of meat, if it does not rest, actually deteriorates as well. Okay, folks, let it sit, let it rest for about how long? Like, uh, it really, minutes? it depends on the size okay. of the uh, beef. Obviously, if you had a roast, usually by pounds, okay. um, it would be much longer. But for a standard size, you know, steak like this, around eight ounces, you're looking kind of for one minute, 90 okay. seconds. Perfect. Not super long, just enough to kind of re absorb that moisture as the yeah. beef cools down. Slightly. So many great hot grilling tips today, Jesse. You are so knowledgeable. Yeah, so Love we're it. going to get set up to finish our final dish. So again, some seasonal vegetables, broccolini. Ooh. Nice, nice, nice. Some asparagus. 
that we will tuck off as well. Some of those beautiful brulee tomatoes. Nice, look at that. Oh. Almost stewed, nice and soft. Bottom. Always like to plate with even numbers. Let's pull the little bit of veg that we have left off. And now our Look flat iron. That say flat iron, so underestimated, so delicious. It's one of my Look favorites. At that. Everyone needs to get to the wheelhouse in Georgetown for their staycation. Look at that to perfection. So we have a nice cut here, nice medium rare, really looking like it is going to work really well with that risotto and that uh, acidic mushroom that we have. Oh my goodness, so lovely. So now we're going to take our lovely flat iron. It's also a staycation when you get to come to the wheelhouse and enjoy this gorgeous view. You Absolutely. have Chef Jesse cooking for you. What could be better? So now we're just going to top it off a little bit of our chimichurri. One of my favorite condiments on a steak, but to? not super popular, is a nice corn salsa. Oh my gosh, you can't go wrong with the corn salsa. Delicious. Nice acidity in there again, balance the fattiness of that flat iron. And what the color just looks like, just pops so beautiful. And again, just for a little bit of texture, some fried parsnips, like so. Perfect. And just a touch of green just for some color. Love it. There we go. Let's cut for a second, Michael. We'll get photos with it before we taste it. 